have you ever taken a picture that just wasn't that good, but you liked it anyway? And you're like, what can I do to save this? So you made a black and white and you called it art. Well, Lightroom's here to save you again. All you mediocre photographers, I'm looking at you, the person who shot it way too slow of a shutter speed, but still felt the urge to post that blurry picture and say it's cool because celebrities do it. My name is Jay LeBlanc. I'm a wedding photographer, as well as a photography educator and mentor. Lightroom has another exciting update, to say the least. They've just added some pretty cool new features. It's nothing that we haven't seen before that already exists in our cell phone for the last four or five years, but Lightroom's taking their shot at it now. Think portrait mode, but for your camera. So portrait mode on a cell phone is trying to be a professional camera. And now the professional camera is using the software that the cell phone's using trying to be a professional camera. So the professional camera is trying to be a cell phone trying to be a professional camera. Lightroom just added this new feature where we can make the background blurry. Ooh. In theory, it sounds pretty cool, but I've had some mixed results. Don't get me wrong. Full disclosure right here. This feature is still in testing. Even when you load it into Lightroom, it says early access. I guess kind of implying that it's still in beta testing and it's not fully there yet. And I can agree. And let me show you exactly what I mean. So let's jump into Lightroom and take a look at some of these new features. After you install Lightroom version 13, you will have this whole new tab on the right side in our develop module called Lens Blur. It even says early access on it. You can click on it and it lets you know Hey, it's not perfect, but we're trying. Thanks Lightroom. Really appreciate that one. I couldn't tell. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to use this one image I have from a wedding that has a bunch of lights in the background. It'll be pretty obvious some of the effects that are going on here. Then I'm gonna show you this same feature on some other pictures where it doesn't quite have the same impact. So first thing we're gonna do just click apply. So Lightroom's gonna do its thing, it's gonna analyze saying, hey, what's foreground? What's midground? What's background? Then it's gonna pop up with all these options here and we get our preview. And wow, look at that, blurry. Great, so happy that we just blurred out 90% of the picture. Looks like somebody found the Gaussian brush in Photoshop for the first time. Going down the list, we have blur amount right here, which is exactly what it sounds like. How blurry do you want it to be? Ooh, we want it more blurry, less blurry. Hmm. As you can see, this feature uses a lot of computing power. I have a very powerful computer, but it's still bogging down trying to do some of these features. So we're gonna just leave this at 50%, kind of the default of, yeah, this is what we think it should be. So our first option for our bokeh styles would be circle. Modern circular lens. Cool, thanks Adobe. What I think they're trying to say there is that's just a standard kind of bokeh you would expect out of a professional level lens. And it looks okay. I don't have too many problems with that. We're gonna go to the next one, which is bubble. Standard circular shape with overcorrected spherical aberration. Ooh, sounds fancy. Basically what it means is you're gonna see a circle around your circles. Our next option is five blade, commonly seen in vignette lenses. This is a look that you would see out of a lens that has less aperture blades. When you're dealing with professional lenses, they tend to have more aperture blades, giving you a much smoother bokeh. Uh, cheaper lenses, especially like a, a Nifty 50 1.8 or something along the lines that's more budget friendly, you'll see these aperture blades a little bit more. I think that's what they're trying to emulate there. Our next option is ring, commonly seen in reflex or mirror lenses, also known as donut. That sounds delicious. So I click on it and we wait and we wait. Oh, look at that. We got donuts everywhere. Eh, it's okay. Not crazy about it, but not the worst. And our last option here, cat eye, typically caused by Optical vignetting in certain lenses. This is gonna give you kind of like a football shape. Not a cat lover, sorry, but I'll say they look like little footballs. Those are also optically pleasing. I think that one would be one of the better options from what we're given here. So as you can see, we have five different options. I'm gonna go back to just the classic one, the modern circular lens. Next we have boost. Adobe says, adjust the brightness of 
out of focus light sources. So we're boosting kind of that bokeh. So I'm gonna boost it all the way up to 100. Doesn't want to go to 100. Too much boost. That looks kind of cool. It's brightening it. Nothing against that. Now I'm gonna take the boost all the way down to zero. Let's see what that does. That's just kind of making everything muddy and weird looking. Don't love the way that looks. So I'm going to leave it right at 50 as we continue through our tutorial. Next thing we have is focal range and subject focus. Set focal range automatically using AI subject detection. Then we have point area focus. Set focal range manually via clicking and or dragging on the photo. So because this picture is of a person or people and a horse, I'm going to leave it on subject focus. Next part, we have focal range. So basically what we're doing here is we're telling Lightroom how much of this picture do we want this lens blur being applied to. Inside this box is kind of our in focus subject area. As we drag this box, we'll have more and more in focus. So I'm gonna extend it about three quarters of the way. Now, as you can see, that looks much more natural. We can also adjust it saying we want the background to be damn this thing is killing my computer so we also have the option to drag this to the right side of this focal range saying we want the background in focus and we want the foreground out of focus and yep that looks just like what everybody's been posting on Instagram lately. Here's my subject out of focus and I'm focusing on the background. Yeah, looks lovely. Post that and you'll get so many likes. Make it a reel, you'll get even more likes. I'm not salty or anything. So I'm gonna reset it to what Adobe originally gave us as we go through the remainder of our options here. I like this, it's called the visualized depth. We can check that off and we can kind of see in this like color gradient of exactly what is being affected and where. And it kind of mimics the scale that we have right here. So your white is going to be your foreground, your yellow is really what's in focus in your subject matter. And then as we fade off into the background, we go into this pink and then purple and then black. And that's showing you what's far background and far foreground. I think that's a really neat feature right there. And then we have the option to refine. And let me get into this now because I'm sure you've already noticed, but this did not do a very good job. We're going to go ahead and zoom in like, why would we want our horse to be blurry from the, I guess that's his uh, knee joint down? If you know anything about horses, go ahead, comment and correct me because I don't know much about horses. So our subject matter right here is being split in half on the same focal plane where Adobe thinks that that's part of the background. I'm also gonna come up here and take a look at the horse's head. Its ears right here are just part of the background, I guess, according to Lightroom. And even our bride's forearm. I guess uh, Lightroom didn't like that either because it thought that was the background too. Even the pole that is going through the horse that the bride is sitting on. Where her hand is, is in focus, but then it fades off and becomes blurry. I'm not quite sure exactly what it is thinking, like what's background, what's foreground. And I get it, this picture may be a little bit more challenging as you see right here around the bride and groom's hair. It gets really, really just rigid and not a good cutout. Oh look, this horse behind the groom, their leg is in focus. Maybe we could borrow that and put it on our horse that should be in focus. The next step on our lens blur tools is focus and blur. So what this is going to do is actually give us options for changing the mask that Lightroom creates, telling it what should be in focus or what should be blurry. For example, right here on the horse, we're gonna go with its ears. Well, its ears are supposed to be in focus. So we're gonna click on focus. And then you have all the same adjustments that you would with any brush inside of Lightroom. So we're gonna bring up our brush. I'm gonna keep auto masking on. And we're just gonna go ahead and paint this back in. See what happens here. And would you look at that? Our friend, the horse, 
has ears again. Congratulations, my friend. And then if we want to do the opposite and blur something that should be blurry but isn't, such as our horse in the background, we could come over here with our blur brush, we adjust the size, the feather, the flow, auto mask, the everything that you already know about brushes in Lightroom is an option here. So I'm not going to go into detail with that. Brushes have been around for a very long time. So I'm just going to go ahead and paint some of this blur back in on this horse that's supposed to be in the background. Now we're going to zoom out. And yes, there's a lot of problems going on in this picture. I'm not actually going to send this picture to the couple. This is just me kind of demonstrating and playing around with the lens blur functionality and clearly it has its problems, but don't get me wrong, this picture is a little bit more challenging. So we're gonna go ahead and try it on something that has a little less going on. And a picture that already naturally has some pretty good background separation and just maybe we wanna enhance it a little bit more. So this picture right here was taken at F2.8, which is gonna give us some pretty good background separation naturally. But I'm going to go ahead and apply our lens blur and see what kind of results it gives us. So as you can see, there's not a huge difference there. And I could click this little eyeball to toggle it off and then back on and then off and then back on. And it's not doing a lot, but it's doing a small amount. Let's go ahead and uh, raise the blur amount. See what happens there. Ooh, so blurry. Now you can really see the difference that it's making here. But you can also see where it still has its problems, such as if we look at the end of the bride's hair here. This is with the filter on. And if we turn it off, you know, it's just giving her a little haircut. And it's nothing that I'm sure she would notice, but we don't want to be giving haircuts out for free here. There are hardworking barbers and hairdressers out there that need to make a living doing this, so let's keep let's let them keep their jobs. Now I'm gonna go to another image that I took recently on my trip to Costa Rica. If you haven't checked out my video with all the gear that I brought to Costa Rica, I'll put a link to it below so you can check it out. We're gonna go ahead and just apply our lens blur here just to see what happens and woo. Yeah, this is not going to cut it. I know with a little bit of refining, we might be able to help it, but it just might be too much to be worth my time. Like, if we zoom in here, like, look at this cable. It is a hard line that Adobe is creating between what it considers foreground and what it considers background. There's no attempt there at even fading that away. And if you look here, it said, you know what? You don't need a chin. That's not part of the foreground. So I went ahead and blurred that out. But you know what, the uh, the walkway right here to your right, yeah, that, that's important, so we're keeping that. And it's creating this kind of funky glow around the legs as well. So as you can see, it, it still struggles to kind of separate the person from its element, which in this case, I'm a little surprised because this was shot at 2.8 as well, and there's definitely some background separation in this image to begin with. I'm surprised that it's struggling so much to differentiate the foreground and background here. So if we go ahead and toggle that off and then back on, you can see the difference. And then just for fun, I'm going to do one more picture. How about this one? This was a cell phone picture and I wanted to include this to kind of compare what a smartphone can do versus Adobe Lightroom. So we're going to click apply on our lens blur and let's see what kind of results it gives us right out of the gate. Hmm. It looks okay, especially if you only need one hand. So yet again, what I'm really seeing is just problems with the edges kind of between our subject matter and our background, along the edge it gets kind of jagged and it's not really ideal. One thing I have to add is this feature is also available on mobile devices. So if you have Lightroom on your phone or tablet, you can get these same features there. 
And just for fun, I took this one picture and I went and tried doing the lens blur. And as you can see, it gave me almost the exact same results that I had on my computer, which I think is a good thing. While it still may not be perfect, I do appreciate the consistency across the different apps. I love that Adobe is innovating right now and trying to add all these really powerful AI features into some of its software, especially removing the need to have to necessarily take your pictures into Photoshop as often. And I think that speeds up workflow for a lot of photographers. But as you can see, some of the stuff is still in the works. I think they're heading in the right direction, but I don't think it's really ready for professional use yet. I think maybe with a lot of fine tuning, you might be able to get a couple pictures to work well with these new features, but I don't think it's quite there yet. I'd rather just see the software be extremely powerful and fast, opposed to have a lot of those gimmicky add-ons that are like, wow, here's a term that's being thrown around a lot, AI. If I say AI enough times in this video, will YouTube boost it to the top of the algorithm? Probably. AI. 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 Did that work, YouTube? Does it get it, people's attention? Yeah. AI is all the hype and craze right now, and I think it's great in our industry, but a lot of the stuff is being rushed to the market and not fully tested before it's ready to be implemented. With that being said, I'm probably just going to remove this update from Lightroom and go back to a different version until this one's ready for the big time. Let me know your thoughts. Do you think you're going to use this? Do you think it's ready for the prime time? Or do you think that it still needs some tweaking and modification? Or do you just not care about AI? Lightroom's cool with me. I love what they're doing. I just want it to be faster. That's the only thing us photographers really ask for Adobe. Just make it faster.